everybody, Dolphin Wizard here, and today I am going to be showing you how to build these fancy zipline outposts here in Grounded. These towers are a stylish way to set up a zipline network all across the backyard, letting you travel quickly and safely between the locations. Not only that, but I've designed these towers to include an additional apartment space near the top that includes all of your essential survival needs. This way, each tower not only serves as a node in your zipline network, but can also serve as an emergency outpost as needed. Let's go ahead and get started with the next tower to be added to our network. You'll need right around three large pallets of stems, two large pallets of grass, and all of these items right here shown in this storage chest. Now that'll let you make an identical copy of the tower that I'm going to show you here today. Um, but obviously you are more than welcome to make modifications as you desire. Um, I will also provide you with a list of all these resources in the description. To get started, we need to create a flat base for our tower. We're going to be making a 5x5 grid out of pebblet foundations. Now since we are building a round tower, go ahead and use the curved pebblet foundations for each of the corners. Now the main tower itself is going to be a roughly three by three circle centered on our foundation made with mushroom brick walls. Uh, so more specifically, we are using four regular walls and four curved walls. And notice that this leaves a buffer of one foundation block all the way around our tower. We'll do something with this later. Go ahead and pick one side to be the front of your tower. I'm going to be choosing this one myself and make that a door. With the door in place, all of the remaining walls can really technically be any combination of standard walls or windows that you want. I believe that all of the costs are the same. Um, however, if you start adding too many windows to the build, it can start making the tower look a little bit funny. So I will show you what my strategy is in placing windows and walls throughout the build. Essentially, for the bottom floor, I like to leave all of the flat walls solid, and I leave as many of the curved walls as windows as I possibly can. For the bottom floor, that's going to mean each of these three curved walls are going to become windows. So let's get those in place. However, the back left wall is going to need to be a solid wall because our staircase is going to cover it up. Now when viewing the floor from coming through the door here, this is what our base floor should look like. We can now start our spiral staircase, and this is going to be a repeating pattern that goes most of the way up our tower. Uh, we're going to start by placing some grass stairs directly across from the door. And at the top of these grass stairs, we can go ahead and place some curved grass flooring so that we have a nice consistent floor as we go. And ultimately, this is the main functional part of the stairs that is going to get repeated. Right here, we're going to end up placing another grass stair and then another curved grass floor. However, we want to make this look just a little bit more substantial. So to make that happen, we're actually going to use some roof. So we're going to actually put a pine cone roof right here, directly underneath what will be our next set of stairs. And likewise, we're also going to need some curved floor, which will connect to our next pine cone roof. This time we're going to be using stem floor to kind of match the brown color. And that way, whenever we repeat our next pine cone roof section, all of that remains continuous. Now we've got this big gap that we need to kind of fill in, and we're going to do that with some stem walls. So we need to go ahead and invert our triangular stem wall. That lets us fill that in right next to the pine cone roof. And we could just put in another stem wall here. However, it would be really nice if we could lift this up by half a block to make it a railing in order to make that 
all filled in, we just need to grab a half stem wall, fill in the gap, and there is our railing. So this whole section that we have just built here, we are going to repeat three more times so that we go up a total of four floors uh, before we start making uh, some changes to how we're doing our structure. So I will walk you through that process one more time. Uh, so we do our grass stairs. They go up to a curved grass floor. We also need kind of our under structure. So that's going to be pine cone roof at the top of the pine cone roof. We have our stem floor. And then in order to blend everything, we use our stem walls. And just like on the base floor, we need to buffer this with an additional half wall so that we can have a proper railing. So there is one more iteration of our stairwell. So we're just going to need to do that two more times as we make this stairwell taller. As we continue to make this stairwell, we should continue adding our mushroom brick walls. Um, and as I said earlier, you can add any pattern of walls and windows that you like. Um, however, this is my personal recommended pattern. Um, I like to basically add windows from any point here on uh, wherever you can stand and look out a window. So that means right there on that corner where we were just standing, we want to add a window. Um, everywhere else on this floor, you can't stand and look out a window. So we're going to put solid walls uh, basically everywhere else. All right, so I've got solid walls in almost all the way around, except for right here. Right here, we're going to have a little bit of an exception. I would like to actually still put one more window here alongside the stair, but we have to do it in a little bit of a special way. I can't just put a window right here because it's cut off by the stairs, so we're actually going to need to raise this up by half a block. Obviously, we're then leaving half a block space. Luckily, we have half a block that we can put there, and we also need to put half a block on top. That way, it's easy to continue the rest of this pattern on future floors. So that way, we have a window here, a window half a block up where we can still look out while we're on the stairs, and then we're able to just repeat this pattern for the walls once again on the next floor. And so we're going to continue this once again, until we have gone up four floors. All right, so I've just finished making my four floors. That's one, two, three, four. And you'll notice I'm missing two things here, and that's because of how we are going to change things now that we've made it up to the fourth floor. Rather than having a triangle uh, wall here to act as a railing, we're actually gonna put another half wall and we don't have a stem floor here. And that is because the other two thirds of the tower right here, we're gonna be putting in all grass floor because this is where our apartment section of this tower is going to be. So we need to fill all of this in with grass plank floor. Now, in order to make sure that we don't just walk off into the stairwell and just kind of separate this as a separate room, we're going to put a bunch of these stem half walls. Um, I just like the look of the stem half walls stacked rather than using full stem walls. Um, it's also a little bit more consistent with the look we were using down here. Um, we're going to wall that off to separate this as its own room. Now for the mushroom walls all around the edge, we're going to employ the same strategy that we did down on the bottom floor. That means for the flat walls, everything is going to be a solid wall. This is the exception. Since this was a stairway, we still had kind of a half offset wall. You can leave it alone. And then on each of the corners, wherever we can stand and look out, of the window, we can put a window in. And where we can't, which is right here, we need to put a solid wall. So now this little room is going to be what we kind of consider our apartment art 
and what makes this an outpost as well as a zipline tower. Now it's time to get started with the very top floor, which is our zipline landing. We can go ahead and copy a decent amount of our current floor, but we want to make this top floor mostly solid all the way around. The middle is our one exception where we need to have a little bit of access to be able to get up top, but we don't need a whole block. So we're going to put a half floor in, leaving half floor open. Now, to get up and down to this top floor, we technically can just jump up and down. And in fact, that's how I usually do get up and down between these two floors. However, I always like having an official method of getting up and down between floors. So I do put a ladder right here to let us get up and down between floors. However, you can just jump just like that. And that's what I almost always do because it is significantly faster. Now up here on our zip line landing, it's still a little bit small to be trying to put in multiple zip lines. Now, luckily, Obsidian added in a very handy curved grass outer floor that we're going to use to extend our floors by half a block in every direction. So we're going to use those on each corner and then just use a standard half floor on each side. Now, with all that in place, this looks much more spacious. Now, at this point, we really are ready to build our roof supports, build the roof, and be pretty much done with most of the structure. However, it is much easier, I have found, to actually put our zipline anchors in right now. We are going to grab our zipline anchors and put one on each side of our zipline tower. Um, I, it might be a little bit overkill, but that's just what I like to do. Now, I often like to use the little snap to grid to get these perfectly lined up just like that. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. You saw I had some difficulty. It really wanted to snap to kind of this square instead of right there. Um, it Just mess with it for a little bit. You should be able to get it to snap where you want it. Um, if not, one trick that I have sometimes found is that if you move your full square plank to right there and swap your half um your half floor right there sometimes that makes it just a bit easier for your zipline anchor to snap in place now technically with these four anchors in place you could use this as a zipline tower already but we want this place to be looking as nice as Take possible just like that zipline tower that we've got set up right over there so let's get some of these roof supports in so we can get that and a roof going in order to do that, we need to get some windowed stem walls and we need to make a triangular structure as far out in the corner as possible. So we need one on an angle and then two that are straight 90 degrees, just like that. So you're going to repeat that pattern in each of the other corners. Make sure that you're not putting it here on this corner, you're going to take away a lot of your space and not set up your roof properly. It needs to be on the very edge of your platform. Once those are in place, our top platform should look something like this. And the last wall that we need to get in place actually is going to go right here. We're going to grab another stem half wall and put that on the opposite side of our opening. Um, that basically prevents us from accidentally falling into our opening, walking around on this side, but it alternatively makes it much easier to drop in from this side. So it kind of serves a dual, nearly opposite purpose, um, but I do like having that stem half wall kind of right in the middle of the platform. Uh, just helps make movement a little bit nicer, in my opinion. With that built, we are now ready to build the roof. Uh, the first thing we need to do is grab this flat triangle roof. I'm also using pine cone for my roof. Uh, that's what the ingredients list that I showed you is for. But if you want to use a different material, you go for it. Uh, but we're going to be putting these flat triangle roofs uh, right on top of the triangular structures that we just built. 
And with those in place, our next step is to grab just these standard roofs and make an archway over each zip line. There we go. Now we want to basically make a peak in the middle. And to do that, we need to use our interior corner roof segments. And above those, just the norm normal roof corners. Once placed, it should all look like that. The last part of our roof that we need to build is just kind of a nice little finishing touch. And we're going to use a pine cone valley right on the peak above each zip line. I just like kind of the little bit of polish that this adds. And that is it for the main structure of the roof. Now, before we head down and do a few additional modifications to the base of our tower, uh, we're going to need to actually get up on top of the roof. Um, to do so, you may need to uh, kind of grab, let's see if I can do this, there we go, grab one of your like half, uh, half floors and just kind of sneak your way on up to your roof. What we're adding up here is a trail marker, which this trail marker makes, you know, a nice looking little flag on top of your zipline base, but that's not really the point. The point here is really to be able to set an actual image um, to identify the marker. And that way, if I turn our markers back on here, we can easily see where else we have our zipline towers throughout the yard. So you can see here I have a bunch of them scattered over in that part of the yard over there. We can also then quickly look on the map. And if you're using like a consistent icon and only using that for your towers, uh, we can see basically the long line of them that I've been setting up along this retaining wall. Um, I've also got one randomly set up here elsewhere in the upper yard. Um, so I definitely recommend kind of picking an icon that you want to use for your towers that you aren't using for other purposes and uh, set that as your icon whenever you are putting this trail marker in place. Once that's up there, make sure that you drop down in the same spot that you came up so that you can fix that floor piece that you had to temporarily move. All right, so here we are back at the base of the tower, and I must say things are shaping up quite nicely. I really like with the method that we choose for um, our window placement, how we can really see that spiral of windows going up even on the outside of the tower. Anyway, we really want to add just a bit more um, kind of a decorative touch here on the outside and kind of make the uh, extra buffer of a foundation here um, a bit more functional. Uh, we're going to kind of make this into a bit of a porch and we're going to be doing that by adding some awnings. Um, I am using clover awnings for this. Uh, we're going to use a mixture of the awning B and just the normal awning. Um, I like to use the awning B right in the middle on each side. That gives us kind of a nice little archway that we can use as an entrance up onto sort of our porch section. Then we're going to go back in and grab the, I guess, kind of normal awning. And this is going to have just kind of a nicer arch pattern. And I like how these interconnect just a little bit better. And we'll fill in the rest of our little porch with these. Now, if your foundation's uh, kind of like mine, especially here over on this side, it's it's a bit of a awkward way to get up onto it. And so what we're going to do is on each side right there in the middle is we're going to grab some of these headlet ramps and we're going to need two of them on each side heading right into that awning B that forms a nice central archway. And once we get the last of those placed, we don't really want to encourage you to jump up on the rest of the sides. And so we are going to be putting in a fence. I like the look of the acorn fence the best. So that is what we're going to use. We need to put in a, uh, a corner on each side, and then we can have just a straight fence on either side of curved fence that lines up perfectly then with each ramp that we put in. 
And there we go. That is the fence and awning in place, which concludes basically the main structure of our build. All that we have left at this point is adding in some lighting so that this place isn't just pitch black at night and uh, adding in our furniture to make this actually a usable outpost as well as a zipline tower. So let's get started with that lighting first. I like to put two of the sap sconces on each side of our awnings as shown like this. Once you get all of those built and in place, it ends up putting a nice ring of light around the base of your tower. Here on the main floor, we're also going to put a sap sconce on either side of our door. Here on our stairway, I like to put a plant lamp right around here on each corner going all the way up, starting here on the base level all the way up to our apartment level. Um, now to get nice consistent spacing, I also recommend doing the snap to grid method here. And uh, again, it can be a little bit finicky sometimes on placement, so just be patient with it. Sometimes if you can't get it to work at first, moving one or two of the adjacent uh, walls out of the way and then getting your lamp in place might work. Um, otherwise, just eyeball it the best you can. Up top here, we do need two more plant lamps. We're going to put one on either side of our half wall. Here, I myself had to move our wall out of the way in order to get that second lamp to go. Once you've got those, it is once again sap sconce time, and we're going to be putting three of these sconces by each zip line, one above each of these two window arches, and I like to angle them down just a bit, and then one right on each of these um, triangle roof parts. And with the last of those lit up, we now have all of our lighting in place. And it is time to get furnishing our outpost. Now, of course, you put whatever you think you need for survival in your outpost. But this is what I like to put in mine. A simple bed so that we have a place to sleep and set a respawn point if needed. Now, I'm a solo player, so one bed works for me. If you have multiple, maybe put more beds, use a bunk bed, add a bunch of lean-tos, whatever you need. We also need some kind of storage. I like to use the grass side table because it looks really nice next to a bed. Obviously, it's not the best storage system, but it has enough for what this outpost needs. I mentioned earlier that we were going to add a little bit of extra light. The wasp lamp is my favorite light and probably just decoration item in the game, so I have to have it in here. We also need to be able to make food. Uh, the easiest way to make food is just on a roasting spit. So we got to have a roasting spit right here under this window. Of course, one of the just essential things to be able to do in any kind of a base is just craft stuff. So a workbench has to go in here, of course. Now, here's where things maybe get a little bit more advanced. I do like to have a cookery in my outposts. Um, Totally optional again, but that way we can have full options when preparing food. And this is one that may be again a little bit expensive, but I would highly recommend, and that is fresh storage. That way you can always keep food ready to go in your outposts. And uh, as soon as you finish this, I would highly recommend getting some food in here ready to go. That way, if you're ever just out and about in the yard, you're starving, you can run up in here, you have food to eat, always ready to go. All right, so that basically covers what I like to keep here in my apartment section of our tower. Um, now you'll notice that we've got great stuff to take care of food, but nothing for water, and that is also key for survival. Basically, the water stuff just is too big to handle up in our main apartment, so we do that down here on the main floor. Uh, we're basically just going to add two more quick builds, and that is going to be, number one, a dew collector. We're just going to kind of stash it in this corner, throw that there, that'll make us water. And second, this isn't necessarily entirely needed for me as a solo player, but especially if you play with other people, uh, I would definitely recommend having this. And that is putting a water container in your tower as well. 
And, uh, and again, just like I mentioned with the fresh storage, put food in there as soon as possible. I would recommend getting water in here as soon as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and follow my own advice and dump my canteen in here. Well, with that, our zipline tower is now complete. All that is left is to head up top and connect zip lines up to all of your other uh, towers or other zip line points that you already have set up in the yard. And for me, since I've already got some zip line towers set up here, we're going to go ahead and link this on up to the other one and head on over. Well, that will conclude our zipline tutorial for today. If you did find this tutorial helpful at all, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more of a rounded building tutorials as well as my ongoing Let's Play series. And I hope that you all have a fantastic day.